Guys, apropos of nothing, uh, I am sitting here with all going on in my life watching the 10 signs of a wife, and I guess this means girlfriend, with borderline personality traits. We are going to listen to this shrink describe, <laughs> describe <laughs> sign number four. Sign number four of getting in a relationship with a woman with borderline personality disorder. Take it away, Mr. Shrink. The husbands were somewhat similar in terms of these percentages. Oh, so again, we see a significant difference between a marriage that involves a wife with BPD and a marriage that does not. Hmm. Moving now to sign number four. Okay. Sign number four is we see terrible problem solving and communication skills as well as frequent arguing. The wife often demonstrates a criticism, attack, conflict type behavior and avoidance behaviors. So I love you. I hate you. You suck. Fuck you. I love you. So we often see the same arguments and complaints year after year. Now when talking about marriages without BPD, we still see arguing in those marriages Usually the format of the arguing is the wife making demands and the man withdrawing, right? Yeah. That's the typical format we see in the research literature Seven years of that. explained for what they call community samples. However, with a marriage that involves the wife having BPD, that's reversed. We yeah. see the men making demands and the women <laughs> withdrawing. So Get out there with that hoe and hoe that corn, woman. So a real difference there in terms of the approach of wooden style. Now, in terms of the arguments specifically, again, now talking about the borderline personality disorder affected marriage, we see that there is physical violence in both directions, but the wife exhibits more. <laughs> she tends to be the aggressor. I bet. The wife also exhibits more verbal aggression. Uh -huh. And during. Fuck you. You suck. During arguments, if the wife cannot hurt the husband in some way, or sometimes even if she can, she'll often hurt herself. That's fairly common. So both people are physically hurt, even though most of the time, again, the wife would be the aggressor. We also see a lot of usage of weapons of opportunity. So this is really based on reaction. Weapons of opportunity. I love that. I've never heard it. I love the term weapons of opportunity. Active anger, not instrumental anger. This is emotional and unplanned, not like a scheme to harm somebody. So again, weapons of opportunity, and I've seen many examples of this throughout my career. <laughs> Chairs, eating utensils, I mentioned in a prior video the use of a spork, which I thought was a little unusual. Spork. Shoes, dishes, glasses, like glasses that would hold water. Gallon containers, like a gallon of milk, <laughs> which weighs over eight pounds and can do a lot of damage. It can. Keys, a lot of times these are thrown, like the keys are thrown. Phones, like smartphones, books, clocks, frame <laughs> photos. I've seen examples of a lot of objects being swung or thrown or just in general being used as a weapon. As part of these arguments and sometimes as part of the devaluation cycle, we also <laughs> see that the wife will destroy something that the husband values, like something that has sentimental value like for him dog. perhaps. I've seen a lot of horrible examples of this as well. I've seen situations where the wife took tools or like computers and put them in hydrochloric acid. <laughs> I've seen situations where the wife <laughs> sold or threw away oh, collections like stamp collections, coin collections. I've seen the wife throw away medicine, right? So medicine the husband would need, it would be important to have. And I've also seen the situation where the wife will fill the <laughs> husband's vehicle, like his car, with gasoline. Now sometimes when I talk about this, like in trainings, whatever, People will say, oh, that's really nice, you know, the wife filled the husband's car with gasoline. I'm not talking about the tank. I'm not talking about the fuel tank. I'm <laughs> talking about the passenger compartment. So filling the passenger compartment with gasoline and sometimes lighting on fire. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'm my healing process is... Uh, I know I'm supposed to be doing my depressed collapsitarian rant here on Thursday, 
uh, whatever the fuck day it is, June 3rd, but somehow I'm not nearly as depressed listening to this uh, as I thought I would be. I want to thank the good doctor for inadvertently uh, helping me with my depression of, of losing my Dulcinea. Although I did see Dulcinea showing up on the pole bean uh, frame video. Uh, so I'm glad to see that Dulcinea uh, is still speaking to me, I guess. Not sure uh, if, if Dulcinea would, would fill my pole beans with gasoline or not. I guess I will never find out. <laughs>